Um, first of all, my name is Dustin Tidwell. I currently live in a town named Salida, Colorado. Um, I grew up in Wyoming in the United States, uh, initially in a real small, almost ghost town, and then uh, through my schooling years until through high school, I grew up in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and um, had a bunch of military scholarships, uh, but decided to go into, uh, into the University of Wyoming where I studied finance and marketing. And uh, when I graduated, uh, the world took me to Denver, Colorado. And I, I was not in the art world. I've only taken like one art class in maybe junior high. Um, so that wasn't even part of my picture yet. Upon graduation from college, I had uh, uh, started in the uh, investment advisory world. And um, that was what the professional career I worked in for 14 or 15, maybe 16 years. Um, my background in Wyoming, my, my, my father's family um, was partially Native American and very sort of like, uh, you know, uh, plainsmen, horsemen. Um, my, my stepfather's family, when my mom and dad got divorced, my stepfather's family came from a uh, ranching and rodeo background, so I have a quite a, a Western culture, I guess. Um, so it says uh, also, did my upbringing prompt a specific reference point within my work? I suppose so. I don't paint westerns. I don't paint scenery. I don't paint things like that. But I, I do use a lot of uh, Native American medicine wheel. Uh, imagery in in my paintings and and some Native American just imagery in general. I think that is an ancestral tie. Um, you, you ask the question: Is your work informed by certain concepts or themes from your childhood background, socioeconomic status, and where you lived and were raised? I, I guess it, there's there's a substantial spiritual bent to my work. Um, I do believe in, in a creator, and I'm not going to go into my spirituality in this, but uh, a lot of my work is, is tied to kind of a, I guess, a spiritual background. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I guess you would definitely say that we grew up poor, or I grew up poor, but we didn't really know it. Um, I don't know if it was even poor. We had food, shelter, friends, cars, so we were, we we're fine. Um, but from a dollar bill counting standpoint, I guess you'd say poor. Um, but that's, I don't know if that really influences um, my, my, my art. Losing my business when I, when I became very sick, uh, to tell you kind of what happened or how the art started is uh, in about 2014, I picked up a paintbrush. My kids had received an easel for Christmas and I was really having a hard time. Some pretty challenging things was going on in my life. The business world was overwhelming, so that was my decompression point. And then I had some real bad tragedies happen in my family. Um, unexplained, immediate sad losses. Uh, my health declined. I had a severe snowboarding accident. And I, I, I don't honestly recall the chronology of it. And do I care to anymore? I don't. Um, it happened, and in 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 the fa in the matter of that or the process of that, I had to get out of the city. My wife and I moved to Colorado, or a place named Salida, Colorado. Uh, what brought us here, though, was um, I saw this post about this place called Crestone. It said Crestone, Shambhala of the Rockies, and I went there for a while. And because of this, the tragedies and trauma and the accident um, damage to my brain I was very in a very out of uh, body state if that makes sense I, I couldn't function it felt like I was living in kind of a nightmare uh, very foggy very mystical lots of cool synchronicities but a lot of just <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it again you know so <clears throat> let's see uh, upon leaving Creston we'd never been through Salida but my wife saw this sign that said Salida, that's Salida, and it was an arrow pointing, and she was driving past, and she said, Salida, that's the exit, and I said, what, uh, it didn't make sense to me, but um, we got home, and she said, let's sell the house and move to Salida, so that evening, we started the process to sell the house, we called the landlord, and he had just listed a property, we came up a day or so later, and 
rented it. Um, we had never been to this town, um, but it, I'm, I'm very thankful we've been here. It's a very small town with a lot of creative types, and, and it's not necessarily really tied to that whole, uh, I don't know, societal way that America has become. It's, it's very unique. Uh, a lot of eccentric people around. So, um, and also, I think one of the major things that happened to me along the way, two of them, was uh, I was uh, 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 the business I had built for 15 years quickly vanished. Uh, specifically, was kind of sabotaged. Um, um, my explanation: some of my art pieces may go into that in the future, but. Yeah, um, some people that I called brothers and friends pulled some legalese in, in my time of ailment and, and basically took my, my income from me. So, yeah, that uh, I had to deal with. Uh, um, I had to learn acceptance, but that took a long time, and it took a lot of work through the paintings to, to find acceptance. Some people taught me about sacred geometry and... Uh, the energy or emotions that colors can convey or bring about. Um, so I started using those tools in my work. I started using sacred geometry and Native American medicine wheel and mantra or kind of like praying at the canvas. I know that may sound weird to some. I don't really care. Um, but allowing kind of the creator or God or something along, something higher, better, more peaceful that I was feeling to channel through me. So, um, and I would say that is my biggest influence is in question two, you ask what the biggest influences are. I would say that, you know, the, the events were my influences. I, 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 I don't even call myself an artist now. I do a radio show uh, on the air that I've been doing for six years, which is kind of my hour a week of connecting with people and I interview artists and musicians and talk about their journey and a lot of the questions you're asking me and um, you know for me the art was uh, uh, some people want to create to, to make it a living my, my art was I, I didn't want to go paint every time I went to paint I had to it had to and it may sound abstract which it is but it was kind of a life or death thing um, so my, you asked question three, what are you focused on right now? Um, for the past couple of years, I've been wanting to digest this story in my healing process. I feel it would be cathartic to get this out, um, and explain, uh, you know, maybe kind of some tools that I learned along the path that may be helpful for other people to find peace um, I don't know anything, any answers per se. I know the things that helped me along the way behind the paintbrush and getting through life on this earth uh, and, and, and addressing the impacts and the traumas and the you know, sickness. Um, so I guess uh, focusing on getting that story, uh, because of the injuries, I, I, I'm not able to do a lot of the things I was so capable of doing and my kids can even do, but... When it comes to technology, trying to, how to figure out how to make this recording took me a couple hours. But um, anyhow, that's what I'm focused on, maybe getting out that story. I, I don't have, you know, I, I want to get the story out to inspire other people and kind of to close this chapter up for me so I can come to resolution on, on, on some things that I've been painting and pondering on for a long time. So what is the biggest challenge of being an artist? You know, I, I don't know. In my situation, it's tr keeping balanced, keeping motivated. Um, since my intention, I guess, is different, everyone has different intentions, right? But my intention isn't so much to, hey, sell this many paintings and you know reach this many people and get this many likes. Uh, it's more to kind of get it off my chest. And I saw a picture of myself from exactly 11 years ago and. I would like to have that joy in my heart and in my eyes that I had back then. And I feel it's this process has been coming close. Um, you asked what advice would I give to my younger self. Um, don't walk with any fear. Um, the scary things that are out there are 99.9% .9 not even real. And um, keep faith in yourself. And, and, and that there's something bigger out there watching out. 
and keep breathing, man. I find that I'm a shallower breather sometimes when things get a little stressful. So breathe. And then I guess finally, trust your gut. Trust your instinct. When when you meet somebody and it's like, this is a, somebody you should know more, or the gut's like, ah, maybe veer the other way, trust it. It has never treated me wrong. So when I didn't trust my gut or listen to it, I, it, it, there was valuable and painful lessons at times. So you said, have you ever tried any unconventional mediums or techniques? Um, I, I would think that maybe some unconventional, you know, I've done some paintings where I just melted crayola crayons all over a paint, paint a canvas to create some texture. And then I kind of painted on it and then melted it. Sometimes I've lit canvases, uh, or poured like uh, some lighter fluid on them to light them on fire to melt some of the canvas. I had some paintings that um, I was processed. I was done processing. I didn't like the image. I didn't want to see the image, but it represented that emotion. And, and I would, at sunrise, I would take them to this fire area, this fire pit up on the mountain, and I'd burn them. And I would send them, you know, kind of my way of dismissing that energy, that emotion, allowing the healing to come through. I don't know. Um, I, I use sacred geometry in a lot of my paintings. It's kind of a background. So I'll start a canvas and just draw sacred geometry, circular sacred geometry, um, you know, flower of life sort of stuff. And that kind of just kind of pulls me into a present state. Um, I use some techniques with how I paint that geometry, whether I'm going clockwise with the circles or clock counterclockwise I meditate to find presence so when I find that I'm concerned about the future um, that's a fear and uh, when I'm concerned about the past or I have some sort of sadness that's kind of like I'm I'm, I'm angry at, at I'm having a resentment towards the past um, but I can't do that when I'm in the now so doing that sacred geometry if I'm Concerned about something in the future, I tend to draw the circles clockwise and counterclockwise if I'm thinking about something historical. I don't know why it works. I, I don't. I, I know it works for me. Um, so that's cool. Um, do you listen to music or have any other type of background noise when you work? Or do you do it in complete silence? More often I've been sitting in silence or not really needing to have something uh, tickling my brain and uh, entertaining me. But I do often use uh, books on tape or listening to a podcast. I like to listen to harmonic tones. 432 hertz and 528 hertz are these sounds. That, and there's music made all around them. I really resonate well to them. Um, so I, I, I've created a YouTube video... Or, channel that has like a handful of my paintings and stories behind my process so it's interesting this kind of goes in line with those um anyhow what's the best reaction to uh, someone has had to your artwork i painted a piece a few years ago when i was trying in a way to kind of emotionally and spiritually connect with my dad and my grandpa my dad's dad and it's this yellow painting and it's like three profiles me as a man sunglasses I used to have long hair and I'm just sitting over my dad's shoulder there's a picture of my dad and he's wearing a leather jacket and uh his cowboy hat he was a he was darker skin than me and he he um you know it's it's it doesn't necessarily look specifically like us because it's very abstract but you could tell it's us and then my grandpa is kind of an image of a man on horseback well when I painted that I had displayed it in the in the street with a whole bunch of other paintings under a tent during some, you know, touristy festival around here. And a guy came walking up to me, a young man, and he was emotional, you could tell. And he said, hey, did you, who painted this? Did you paint this? And I said, yeah. And he goes, wow, I saw it from two blocks away. I have to see this. And, and, and I, I, we're in town f for a funeral where we buried our brother this morning. And, uh, I, I don't know why this image touches me so much, but it brings me peace. And I told him who the image was and what it was all about. And, you know, I don't remember his name, He, but we shared a handshake and a hug and a, a genuine fellowship with like some dudes who've been through some pain. And and um, uh, that that was probably the most profound, best, re I, I don't know, best, but like it, I felt it, my art made an impact, so... Um, what do you hope people take away from my art? Um, what do I hope people take away from my art? 
inspiration. I want them to say, hey, <laughs> if this dude could get over that shit and can create this stuff, then I can too. Uh, it's not so much people going, ooh, wow, look at what that guy did. Look at what Dustin did. Because honestly, it, it more like came through me than came from me, if that makes sense. Um, but I would like other people, um, so often I think people fall upon the news and the fear and a bunch of pills to make their pains go away. And, and I do believe that, that the healer is inside of us. So uh, I'd like to inspire other people to channel that internal healer because it's dope. It's awesome. It's, it works really well. And um, it's, I find sometimes I can't figure out after I'm happy for a couple of days in a row and then I start to get agitated. It's like, what's going on? What do I got to do? And my fallback now is breathe, meditate, throw a prayer out there and paint. And, and it works for me. So, hey man, thanks for reaching out. I hope this recording works. All right. Bye for now.